Ladies and gentlemen, good day. Welcome to the channel once again. This is the video where we'll be covering part two of the GNSS uh, tutorial. My name is Kunal and today I'm accompanied by Senior Captain Kelvin Massau. I believe you remember him from the Day in the Life video. So today we'll be uh, going through some uh, items here for the GNSS. Uh, we'll begin off with uh, the Direct 2. So going direct to a point uh, from wherever you are. Then uh, we'll go towards a beam point. So suppose you have a zigzag route and then you want to go straight a beam the other point. Those are the a beam points. And then we'll go offset. How to if your route is straight and then you want to go left of left or right of track for uh, a certain number of miles. That's your offset. We'll go into holes, which is uh, basically IFR holding. And then uh, we'll just finish up by uh, setting the time and date of the GNSS, confirming everything is correct. So let's begin. So this is the layout uh, of the GNSS uh, while in flight. So we have the progress, uh, missing the flight number here. So this is the normal progress page. The progress is where we always are. So we have the uh, fuel, as it says here, 1.89. That is the estimated remaining at this point, the GER51. And we were crossing uh, level 159 at this time, and with this much fuel remaining in tanks. So we have the next waypoint here, Ludol, Gapso, we're going to Nairobi uh, from Dar es Salaam. So we have our distance to go to Ludol, our ETA. Gapso is the next one, 90, and that's the ETA in Zulu time. Destination Nairobi, distance to go in ETA. And uh, we have our top of descent time, which is 144 Zulu. And the distance to go to the top of descent is that much. So we expect to start descending around that time. Also, we have position reports. So we have the last waypoint altitude, basically what it said, and uh, the, uh, the times, the speeds that we had at the time. The outside air temperature and the current wind direction. So going back to progress, and then position ref. This is the same as it was in the ground, but we have the, uh, the ground speeds report. So there's a bunch of things that we need to discuss here through for the in-flight. So suppose we're currently on LNAV, as you can see from here. So the GNSS is connected to the LNAV. So you have to be on LNAV for the aircraft to follow the whatever you set in the GNSS. So let's try to go direct to a point. Uh, what's the point close by from here? Close by. From here. Like. So suppose. No, no, no. I'm not gonna let it turn. So suppose uh, we want to go. We've been cleared. Suppose direct Kilo Victor, which is Kilimanjaro, the VOR. So what we would do is just put it on the scratch pad, Kilo Victor, KV, and we'd put it on top. Selection page, pick the one in Tanzania like that and we can then execute the thing so be sure to put it on heading before you make any changes so as you can see here that it's on heading and now the screen has changed so direct kilo victor now it's a little blurry but uh, it's right there so direct to kilo victor so I've put it on uh, heading mode for now. If it was on LNAV, the aircraft would start turning towards Kilo Victor. So that's your direct two. So let's go to, and then of course we remove the discontinuity. So now it would be Kilo Victor, and then we'll come back to Ludol, and then we'll go to Gapsa, just like that. And now suppose uh, ATC now says, okay, you're cleared back to Ludol, forget about Kilo Victor. 
So what we do is we can just pick Ludo from here with the second one. The keys are matching with what it is. You pick up, we picked up Ludol, it comes in the scratch pad and we can put it on top and this is what it looked like and always execute. With, once the green light comes on you can execute. So I'm gonna press execute and uh, this is what happens. We go back to Ludol. And I can now engage LNAV again which is done by the NAV button. Okay, so next uh, what we can discuss about is a beam point. So suppose this is our route today. So we're going to Ludo to Ap Gapso and then Apnum. Suppose we're cleared direct to Apnum, a beam Gapso. So we just uh, report to them that we're passing a beam it. So the way we do that is we don't want to remove Gapso but we need to know when we pass it a beam it. So we can pick up Apnum which comes in the scratch pads, put it on top and press a beam points just like that and we execute. So what that changes now, you see it straightens. So that's a beam Gapso. Gapso is somewhere here and it just draws a straight line and it takes you straight to Abnoma beam the Gapso. So that's how you do a beam points. You can do it a beam multiple points also. I can take Jomok and put it on top and a beam in this Abnoma and Gapso. So let's revert back to what it was before. Let's go to Ludol. Apnum. And it reverts back to the initial. Next, what we can do is uh, talk about offsets. Suppose you want to offset the, the route by so many miles due to weather avoidance or something. Uh, you've been cleared five miles left of track or right of track and you want to not play around with the heading and see what the, what the distances are so what you can do is just go to routes so this is your so we're going direct to Ludol, Gapso, Abnum, Antuk so and then we have the offsets right here so we can say now I want to offset I want to go five miles right of track so you offset right so we write R and then 5 so write 5 miles and stick it in the offset here and we can execute and the change is made here you have the offsets OFS and it shows that your 4.8 4.9 miles to the left of track since you want to be on the right you're supposed to be here so you are currently left of it so if the LNAV was engaged the aircraft would then turn to intercept your uh, to give you your five miles right of track and similarly just let's just clear that out to get our normal routes back. So now let's discuss about holds. Suppose you're cleared to hold at Gapso for whatever reason. HC clears you with an inbound track of 050 at Gapso. How do we do that? So with the GNSS uh, we can press the hold key. Just press holds press next hold. The initial hold is at Tango Victor, it's part of the approach, uh, the missed approach in Nairobi. So the next hold, we just press next hold and uh, this, is the, this is the screen you'd come up with. Press Gapso because you want to hold at Gapso and we stick it here. Just press that. So we have our 
modification of the root two holes. So you have fixed your gapso and the radial inbound course. So whatever ATC tells you as inbound course, let's suppose zero, six, zero, or whatever you want, you can put it there, zero, six, zero. And if it's a right turn, you just you can just stick zero, six, zero here. Otherwise, if it's a special left turn, then uh, we'll just put a slash and an L. So zero, six, zero, right turn like that or zero six zero with uh, left turn so zero six zero slash left just stick that like that so it shows you here that your entry will be direct and your fixed ETA will be this much execute and the change is made there's your hold your inbound course would be Zero six zero six zero. There's your hold. Same way you can make plenty of holds that way. So let's just delete that hold. So delete. So there's gap so and then left hold that gap so. Let's just press that. Delete it and execute. And the hold disappears. Now, also, I'd like to show you how to set the time and dates. Just confirm that they're correct. So let's just go to menu, MPC, return, return again. You have your time and flights. Just press that. So just make sure your flight numbers are correct. So it's seven one three. Just put that. Refreshing display. Confirm hours and minutes are okay. Now these can change a lot of times because uh, once we turn around from one sector to another, when the battery of the GNSS there's a small battery, sometimes it doesn't have enough charge, so it just stops working and the time freezes and everything. So like for example now the hour and minutes is 13.07 while it is actually 2.15. So let's just change that 14, 15. Let's put it there. So it's just updating the dates. And that should be it. Always go back to progress. So guys, that covers the part 2 of the GNSS tutorial. Hope this video will be helpful. And as always, if you like the videos, please do support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting. And do share with your friends. And also, if you have any further questions or if I've missed anything on the GNSS, do let me know. And uh, I'll make a short video if I on request. And thanks to Captain Calvin Nassau who filmed parts of the video and also helped me with the GNSS and filming. Thank you and happy landings! Also guys, there's going to be a part 3 in the GNSS uh, tutorial videos. It's going to be mostly tips and tricks that we can use with the GNSS to just uh, reduce some workload and do a few things that may not be published. So be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for the, for the next videos.